Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. The conference theme this year is very much about saver engagement. Yes. As a man who uh, has always said he's very committed to financial inclusion, yes. that must be close to your heart. So what would you, you say are key factors in making that happen? So as the First Minister for Pensions and Financial Inclusion, I believe that this is something, rightfully, that the uh, PLSA is engaging on. I think the um, retirement outcome reviews that uh, have taken place and the meeting the targets is a fantastically good thing. I'm just engaged in a session um, in great detail on both um, meeting the target, but also on simplified statement and also pensions dashboard. All of these things I think are vital to uh, enhancing uh, this process. But I also think that uh, going forward, if you can't access the information on one of these going forward, you're going to struggle. And as I said in my speech, I believe very strongly that there are massive opportunities uh, we see you know, banking is changing, the savings industry is changing tremendously, and we're going to make things accessible to uh, everybody on the back of mobile devices, in my view. You mentioned there the pensions dashboard, and part of that yep. communication project, if you like, has got yes, to indeed. be that. So where are we at with that, and how important is the government's role in it? So uh, we are very, very close to issuing the feasibility study. Uh, I would have liked to have it to been done thus far, but there's a you know, it's a very complex project. Pretending this is simple is uh, naive and wrong. And I want to get it right as well. I don't want to rush something out. Uh, but it, we are very close to being able to issue the feasibility study and to progress this matter. But there's an awful lot of work that is going on in any event. So industry is already preparing the ground for what they're doing. I don't think I could have been any clearer uh, that government is intent on progressing this. And I don't think we could have been any clearer about the direction of travel that we're going on. So there is a lot that we are doing. We're working on governance, we're working on data, we're working on the key nuts and bolts of this. At the same stage, industry's got to do its bit at the same time. Clear communications and messaging is key, and particularly if we're talking about these new consolidations and master trusts, yep. that's something that the public need to have a real trust and faith in. Yep. You're a big supporter of the consolidations. I'm absolutely no doubt in my mind that for the majority um, of larger organisations, bigger is better, without a shadow of a doubt. I think it gives you greater member protection. I think it also gives you greater critical mass to make investments decisions. And I think that uh, that is inevitably the, the direction of travel, whether I wanted to force that happening or not. Um, but I do think government is there to facilitate and encourage that. And that's what I'm certainly trying to do. And these consolidations could bring about a different kind of investment strategy yes. too. And that's something that could appeal to younger savers, particularly if it's big investment and yeah, ESG projects. So, I mean, I think there are, this exists on several levels. There is a very traditional model that pension funds have invested in, and understandably so. But I think uh, we have done good work over the summer to encourage ESG um, and social impact investing, um, the work that Elizabeth Corley is doing, the work that Treasury is doing on patient capital. And I think that does engage people. The uh, evidence is good on that. But I also really want to try and push infrastructure investing by uh, large funds. And it is very much the case that it seems to me you get a better return potentially. You are investing in this country and you're in a situation where uh, it would be a long term part of a long term strategy. It's only a small part I accept entirely, but it's part of a long term strategy that we think the larger funds should be looking at. And it's something savers could perhaps feel good about investing well, in too. As I said in my speech in the Q&A, uh, if, you, if your individual savings organisation or fund is investing something that you can identify as being part of something that you are part of, whether it is Crossrail or King's Cross or the large uh, organisational um, infrastructure things that we're investing, or it's climate change issues, environmental issues, there is good evidence that this is successful. And I look at social impact investing and I look at big society capital, which has been very successful, in a way that is, in my view, laudable and people buy into that. Touching on something else now, you're somebody that's talked about how it's very normal for us to have health checks. Why don't we have a similar financial health check? You've dubbed it as Indeed. a... Midlife think, MIT. Yeah, so tell so me about that. you and I are of a certain age <laughs> where our doctors are engaging with us and sending us little texts saying that basically parts of our anatomy are going to fall apart if we don't immediately have a checkup. And Public health have done really, really well on this and saving people's lives, putting it bluntly. And our dentists are also doing the same thing and nudging us into uh, not missing an annual checkup. And to their credit, because again, it's good for us. 
we don't do this in finance. And one of my paramount missions is to get people engaged in their finances. And you know, if you want to change the world, look in a mirror first and foremost. And it seems to me that the first thing I can do at a pensions conference where uh, you are, you know, this is lifetime savers, it's pensions, it's heavyweight financial services. Um, at the very least, what are they doing for their own employees? Now, you can say we're selling finance and products uh, to the wider world. At the very least, make sure that your own employees are motivated about their financial status and also that they have long-term plans. And I think they, they can then act as a pilot. And several companies are beginning to do this, and I'm encouraging as many as I can to do it. Department for Work and Pensions is conducting a pilot as well. And the evidence is really good already, and I've seen the evidence from Aviva and others, that um, if you do this, it's not just good employee relations, but it's really good for the business, because you retain your, your older workers, you enhance their enjoyment of their job, they don't take the benefit of pension freedoms and leave, and you're in a position that you don't lose the muscle memory of all these great people who've known your business for 25 years. Now, it would be remiss of me with headlines this week not to mention the B word Brexit and how that's perhaps getting in the way at the moment. There's concern that it's sort of causing a paralysis in terms of legislation. What would you say in terms of pensions and what that's doing in the way of what you're trying to do? 110% not the case. Um, I, I get, and it's true, that Brexit is occupying a significant amount of government's time, and to pretend otherwise is wrong. But what is the first bill that this government introduced post-2017? It's the bill that introduced the single financial guidance body. Something about, you may think, quite a technical um, financial capability, impact of, on debt on the vulnerable, pensions guidance bill. Uh, nothing to do with Brexit, and that's the first bill we did. Secondly, uh, we are really pressing ahead at DWP with a whole host of different things uh, whether it is dashboard, whether it is midlife MOT, whether it is auto enrolment, whether it is CDCs, whether it is the DB white paper going into primary legislation, and a whole lot of other things as well, to ensure that we have legislation coming forward next year and that we are match fit for the future. So watch this space, lots Indeed. happening. Guy, thanks so much for joining us. Good to talk to you.